morning. My name is Roger Shock. I'm a pastor of this amazing congregation here at First United Methodist Church in Corinth, Mississippi. I want to welcome you to worship this morning. And thank you for watching on Channel 16 and on the internet. We hope and pray that your worship with us will be meaningful and that you will find and experience the presence of God even in these moments as worship together. May God bless us all as we worship Him today. Good morning. morning. Y'all have never been that quiet before. (laughs) I need the handbells every week to come up here and stand so they'll be quiet. I have to wait on the red blinking light. So we're on TV now. So uh, good good morning, TV. (laughs) My name is Roger Shock. I'm the pastor of this amazing congregation. I want to welcome each of you here to worship today. It's a beautiful day to be in the house of our God. And it's a beautiful day to worship. Today's a very special day. We'll, we'll have an infant baptism, and that's always a treat and a joy for a pastor and for a congregation. And uh, we're also going to be blessed this morning with the handbells, which we don't always get. So that's another uh, equal blessing that we'll have today. We're always blessed with the good music that our choir uh, shares with us, so we're thankful for that. Let me uh, refer you to the bulletin and uh, several uh, announcements. One is uh, parents, and uh, it is spring break, and so... There aren't a lot of parents here. Uh, aren't a lot of teenagers here today. Um, they're on the beach where I wish I was and where you wish you were, but that's the way it is. Uh, but parent, there's a parent meeting uh, for youth on the 26th, so go ahead and put that on your calendars. That'll be over in the loft, and it'll be meeting with Chris and I, so I want you to know about that. Uh, also, uh, each of you, I don't care how old or young you are, uh, are invited to come and participate in the Logos training. Um, this church... I'm looking at this congregation. This church needs you to understand and to be a part of what we're doing as we minister to our children and our youth and to young families and to the church. Uh, This is an opportunity for us to be the church. And so I invite you to come, be a part of this, and and see if the Logos is, uh, see how you might plug into Logos as we teach our children and our young people about the love of Jesus Christ and the love of our God. Uh, But I will invite you to uh, register. This is, in the, this is in your insert this, uh, bulletin today, and you can put that in the offering plate. And uh, there's no cost to you. We'll have lunch that Saturday. Uh, child care is provided. But uh, moms and dads, grandmother, grandfather, aunt and uncle, you're invited to be a part of that. So I, I want to strongly, strongly encourage you to consider that. Uh, last week was our first Lenten lunch uh, series, and uh, Bobby Capps did a fantastic job. We had a huge crowd. Great, great, great food was prepared. Uh, this week, Reverend Ann Frazier from uh, St. Paul Episcopal Church will be sharing with us. And uh, so I want you to uh, uh, know that you're invited to come and, and share in that uh, Lenten lunch uh, um, at noon on Wednesday. The UOW is meeting this week a couple of times. Take note of that. Great ministry that's going on with our, uh, our ladies in the church. Uh, in your bulletin, there's a little black spot. Um, now, I'm looking at the congregation going, y'all are going, I don't know what that is. Uh, there's a little black spot, it's a QR reader. Uh, if you are of a certain generation and you have a smartphone, you know exactly what that is. And uh, you can take your phone out and you can click on that and it can take you straight to uh, our website, which takes you straight to, you can make your morning offering uh, on your phone uh, this morning if that's what you want to do. Uh, now I'm looking at most of you going, smartphone, offering on the internet, you don't even know what I'm talking about. It's okay. If you don't know, it's not for you. (laughs) And you know who you are. (laughs) If you know what it is, you may consider that as an option this morning to make your offering if if that's how you so choose to do so. Barbara Rogers has an announcement this morning. Good morning. I'm glad to see so many of you have sprung forward this morning and are here in time for service. Um, The spring flowers this morning are in... Uh, honor of my mother, Eunice Rose, and in memory of Margaret Green Rogers, Bill's mother. Um, thinking about mothers, I'm also thinking about our stained glass hearts luncheon. Uh, this is the luncheon, ladies' luncheon, that we have. This will be our second one. It um, <clears throat> is specifically a fundraiser for the chapel. We're in need of hostesses. We have a lot of ladies and a lot of talk about people who are interested. 
interested in attending, but we need some hostesses. If you would be interested in hostessing a table of eight ladies for this luncheon, please see me after church or give me a call this afternoon. Our deadline is tomorrow, and we'd really like to host this event again this year if we could. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, after today, after service today, I'm going on vacation for a week, and so I'm going to be camping in the woods. Uh, I'll be at a place where I have very limited cell phone service on purpose, and, uh, uh, but if you need me, you can call the office, and we'll, uh, I'll be checking in periodically to see what's going on back here at the church, but uh, I'll be back next Sunday evening, and uh, everything's covered for the week, but just wanted you to know that uh, uh, I'll be thinking about you as I'm laying in a hammock. And uh, so think about me as I'm laying in a hammock this next week. So that's how we'll pray for each other. Uh, with that said, my friends, we're here to worship the living God. Let's prepare ourselves to worship.
Please stand if you would as we continue to call ourselves to worship. Come to this space in time of repentance. Come to this time and space of renewal. Come to this space and time of grace. Remain standing for opening him, him 103, immortal, invisible, God only wise. Please be seated. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. This morning it is my pleasure and my honor to present to you this congregation for infant baptism, Emma Grace Dole, uh, daughter of, of uh, Wendy and Peter. And uh, it is truly a pleasure this morning. Ooh, look at that hair. Uh, it is truly a pleasure this morning to, uh, uh, to participate in this baptism. So as we begin, I want to ask you a question, couple of questions. Uh, that we talked about in my office, so we know the answer. And uh, uh, hear these questions. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sins? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they may present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord, in union with the church with Christ, which Christ has opened to peoples of all ages, nations, and races? And lastly, will you nurture Emma Grace in Christ's holy church, that by your teaching and example she may be guided to accept God's grace for herself, and to profess her faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? Congregation, I have two questions for you. Do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? Will you respond, we do? 
The next question I have is, uh, your response is printed in the bulletin. The question is this. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include these persons now before you in your care? Will you join me in the response? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround these persons with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. Now let's stand and say we believe using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing exists but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. In the fullness of time you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He calls his, his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Pour out your Holy Spirit now to bless this gift of water and those who receive it, to wash away her sin and to clothe her in righteousness throughout her life that dying and being raised with Christ, she may share in his final victory. Amen. Ready for this? <laughs> in the grace I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit work within you that being born of water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Let me show this beautiful child to this beautiful congregation. She's liking my wet fingers.
just over here is high dollar seats. Serving this area.
Let us pray. We bring these gifts, O oh God, not to win your favor, but to participate in your work of salvation in our midst. We are grateful for the opportunity to bear witness to the love we have received from your hand. In joy, we dedicate ourselves anew as your servants. May these offerings and our lives spread good news. In Christ's name, amen. Please be seated.
Please be seated. be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you, and on the day of salvation, I have helped you. See now is the acceptable time. See now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, 
with these with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left in honor and dishonor in ill repute and good repute we are treated as impostors and yet are true as unknown and yet are well known as dying and see we are alive as punished and yet not killed as sorrowful yet always rejoicing as poor yet making many rich as having nothing and yet possessing everything this is the word of god for the people of god Thank you, God. You may be seated. <clears throat> Let me ask you a question. How do you, uh, how do you plan to be reconciled to God? What efforts are you going to make this Lenten season to, uh, to be reconciled to God? Are you going to give up anything? Uh, or change anything that you're doing to, to help in this reconciliation process between you and God? It's that time of year when, uh, when we intentionally evaluate uh, our lives regarding our, our sin, the, the stuff in our lives that are, that are holding us back from God, stuff that, that we do, choices that we make that hold us back from our God. This is the time of year that we, we attempt to give up something uh, in order to focus more on our faith. So I think about the Lenten season. I always am uh, uh, amused at some of, the, some of the quotes that you find at Lent. And I found some quotes this week on, on, online uh, about Lent. Listen to a couple of uh, interesting quotes that I found this week. Quote number one, Lent is my favorite time of the year not to be a Christian. Number two, let's give up our worst vices with the understanding that in about a month, we'll indulge them with twice the fervor. Quote number three, I'm, I'm going to give up TV for Lent, except for all the programming that I recorded before Lent. <laughs> and finally, your Facebook friends are praying for you to give up Facebook for Lent. <laughs> now those are amusing thoughts and, and jestful thoughts about Lent, which is a very serious topic, but I'm wondering uh, as I think about that way we think about Lent sometimes, I'm wondering if we haven't watered down Lent just a little bit by thinking that we can do something that can help us to, to, uh, to be made right with God. I'm wondering if we hadn't watered down Lent to, 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 to make us think in the church that, that Lent is about us doing something to make ourselves right with God. I'm wondering if we hadn't adopted the process of thinking in the church that, that Lent depends on us and, and, and us making some effort to, uh, uh, that's going to determine the future of our right relationship with God, that's going to uh, determine the, uh, the, the reality and presence today of us being right with God. I'm wondering if we hadn't been taught, and if we hadn't adopted this, this thought that 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 Lent depends on us doing something. It's about us. Well, church, the, the call of Lent, the, the journey of, of Lent is fairly clear in the scriptures, and I think Paul says it well today. Paul says in our scripture, be reconciled to God. Now, how are we to be reconciled to God? What can, what can we do to, to make a, a all... Uh, how can we make right all the wrong that's in our lives? How can we, what can we do that, that can uh, uh, make right all the sin in our lives so that we are right before our God? Well, as I answer that question, what can we do? There's good news and there's bad news to answer these questions. Let me begin with the, good, with the bad news, okay? So are, sit down. You are sitting down, okay? Here's the bad news. Here's the bad news to, the, to what can we do to fix and make right all the junk in our lives so we're right with God. Here's the bad news. The bad news is this. 
you can't do anything to make right the sin joke in your lives. You can't do anything to save yourself from your sins. There's no sacrifice that you can make before God that could fix your life so that it can be right with God. That's the bad news. There is nothing we can do to make ourselves right before our God. So even as I say that, I, I, I would expect in some churches I've been approached just to walk out and go, I give up, I quit, I'm done. Don't give up. Don't, don't walk out de depressed today thinking that, and defeated that, that we can't because we can't fix our lives because there's good news to the question. There's good news. And the good news is reconciliation is the work of God. That's the good news. Us being right is the work of God. 2 Corinthians 5.21, we just read it just a moment ago, says this. For our sake, God made Jesus to be a sin who knew no sin. So that in him, we might become the righteousness of God. Reconciliation is the work of God in Christ Jesus. Being reconciled to God is, is not about what we do, but it's about what God has done. It's about what God is doing. It's about what God will do in Jesus Christ for us. I think the church has, has made Lent to, uh, to be after something that, that we, we've made out to be something that we do. And, and thus, we're set up to fail. Because it's just like our, our New Year's resolutions that we set back a month or two or three ago that we long left and forgot because they were just too hard. Exercising every day is hard. Not watching ESP is hard. Not eating donuts is hard. You know, our New Year's resolutions, because we're going to lose 40 pounds and, and need to lose 60, but we're going to lose 40. Uh, Lent is hard in the church because we've set ourselves up to fail because we've made it out to be something that we do. But Lent and reconciliation is about the work of God in our lives through Jesus Christ. Lent is not a self-improvement uh, process. Jeez, if we, if we were, any one of us were an author of a self-improvement book, we'd be trillionaires. Think about it, the bookstores. Lent is not a self-improvement process. Lent's not a, 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 a being well-intended believers that change something about our lives or that stop doing something in our lives uh, because we decide to. Because we decide it'll make us right with our God. Though changing things and stopping things is a good thing. But that's not what's going to make us right with our God. Lent is way more than us intentionally giving up some common pleasure in our lives because we choose to do so. Lent is more than just giving up Coca-Cola's or Facebook or I don't even know what we give up nowadays. We, we give up lots of things that are trivial, that don't matter, have nothing to do with our relationship with our God. Lent is more than a moral obligation to attempt to live better. It's more than a moral obligation to, that, 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 uh, where we attempt to, to live better or with a higher moral value. Lent's about claiming the promises of God to be truth in our lives. It's about giving more attention to the one, to the one who hung on that cross, who sacrificed on that cross for our sins so that we can be found right with God. Lent's about paying attention to and focusing on the one that hung on that cross. So let me suggest what you might do. What you might do uh, this year to be reconciled with God. It's to grab hold of.
the promises of God in Christ Jesus that is at work in you. Right now, is at work in you, establishing you right with God. Reorienting your lives so that you're found right with God. Fixing your life so that you can be found right with God. Grabbing a hold of those promises. We grab a hold of a lot of things in our world. When we're sick, we go to the doctor and we grab a hold of what they give us. When our car is uh, jacked up and, and sitting on the side of the road, we go talk to our mechanic and we grab a hold of what fixes our cars. Why do we not grab a hold of the promises of our God when our lives are wrecked with sin and we have broken relationships with each other and we find ourselves depressed and discouraged and, and without hope? And we, feel, and we find ourselves feeling guilty and shameful because we're so far away. We feel so far away from our God. Grab hold of the promises of God. Paul speaks to the church of Corinth in our scripture we read, not to accept the, the grace of, of God in vain. Paul may be, may be speaking to us today, uh, telling us to, to not to accept the work of God in Christ lightly. Don't accept that as, as trivial. But claim it, claim it as the work of God in Christ, as truth, as a reality. Paul says that uh, now is the time of, now is the, is the acceptable time, now is the day of salvation. We too, when we claim the promises of God in Christ Jesus, can say, now is the day of salvation. Which means, we're not waiting to be found right with God. That we're not waiting that, that being right with God is not off in the future. That we're, uh, because, of, because we, we believe and we live as though God is at work in us through Christ. Now is the day of salvation means that we are reconciled to God today. Not because of what we're doing, what we're going to do during the next 40 days of Lent but because of what's already been done on that cross, hanging on the wall. Being reconciled to God is a process. It's an ongoing process. Every minute of the day, every day of the week, every, every week of the month, we are becoming who we were created to be as we allow. It's our choice as we allow God in our lives to work. And you know the odd thing to me is that God's not going to force his, his presence in our lives. God is not going to force us to want to wanna think about and to look toward his son Jesus. But it's there. It's a gift. We talked about that last week with Holy Communion. We have to receive the gift. God's not going to force himself on us. The one thing that we do at Lent and every other day of the, of the year, uh, the season of Lent and every day of the year, is that we pursue our God. We concentrate on our God and, and, and we spend, at Lent, we spend uh, concentrated time uh, focusing and allowing God to work in our lives way more than we can, uh, way more effectively by focusing on God uh, does, are we found right with God? Uh, our work is, is in vain. We can't fix ourselves. We can't sustainably fix ourselves with anything. We need our God working in our lives. Today we need to hear the good truth. <clears throat> the truth is this. God is at work in our lives. God is at work in your life. God is the one that changes your life. God initiates all the goodness, all the goodness within you through Jesus Christ. God is the one that saves you through his son, Jesus Christ. So today, I, my, my thought is that, that many of us, myself included, uh, need to change our thinking. And we need to stop believing that salvation is determined by something that we do. Did you hear that? 
We need to stop thinking and change our thinking that, that, and the believing that, that salvation is determined by something that we do. Many of us need to, need to potentially stop trying to work our way into heaven. Working our way, doing something to, to receive the gift of eternity. And many of us need to just um, continue working, doing Christian things. That's not, I'm not saying don't do that. Please don't stop. But my point is, we need to really receive the gift of Jesus Christ, which is the work of God in our lives. Because that is what makes us better. That's what makes us who we are, who we were created to be. And that's what remedies and reorients and establishes us as God's children. Today, we can only be reconciled to God. We can only be made right with God because Jesus lived, Jesus died, and Jesus rose again. Paul says this, and the call to Lent, the call to the Lenten journey is this, be reconciled to God. <clears throat> How many of you own a, a Eugene Peterson, the message, translation of the scriptures? Some of you. It's an interesting read. It's, it's, a, um, it's, a, very, it's a very uh, contemporary translation of the scriptures. It's, it's a really nice read. Uh, sometimes it scares me a little bit because it's almost too easy. But, but, it, but it does make a good point. It helped, I understand some scriptures better when I read it. Eugene Peterson says this. The scripture says, be reconciled to God, which is translation that we all see in our Bibles. Eugene Peterson says it this way. He says... Become friends with God. He's already a friend with you. How? In Christ. God put him, put, put on him the wrong. He never, he, he never did anything wrong. So that we could be put right with God. Be friends with God because he's already a friend of yours. He's a friend of yours because of Christ. And because Christ was sacrificed for us so that we might be found right with him. Let me suggest that you answer the question, how do you plan to be reconciled to God this Lenten season? Four things. One is pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Two, read the scriptures about Jesus, the stories about Jesus. Thirdly, listen to the Holy Spirit that is leading you, that is nudging you and, and, and moving you toward following Jesus. Listen to the Spirit. And fourthly, and maybe the most practical and the hardest one, but yet the one that's most, the one, the easiest one, stop thinking and stop to fix yourselves and just spend more time being friends with God as you spend more time being friends with Jesus Christ. To God be the glory. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning, hymn 451, Be Thou My Vision. That's a Lenten call. Be thou my vision. May God be our vision today. Let's stand and sing hymn 451. <laughs>
for a beautiful Sunday to have an infant baptism. And uh, just want you to know that your singing didn't even wake up beautiful Emma. Maybe it's because my preaching put her to sleep in such a deep trance. Some of y'all, I don't know how you're standing now because your eyes are shut too. Handbells were fantastic. Aren't we blessed in this church with wonderful music? Very much so. Very much so. It's a good day to be in the house of our Lord. And I invite you to, uh, uh, to hear the bad news. You can't fix yourself. And you hear the good news. That God loves you. And God is at work in you. And God is helping you. Let God fix you. Let God forgive you. Let God create you. Let God uh, make you through his spirit and through Jesus Christ. I invite you to uh, uh, receive this benediction. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship and community of the Holy Spirit abide with each of you now and forever. Amen. Thank you.